giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Praneet. And I'm Lenny. And I'm Tegan, or also Praneet. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to We the North, everyone. Um, with the district championships and the provincial championships now come to a close, we are now, you know, impatiently, so to speak, waiting for the, the world championship divisions to come out for Detroit. Um, with that in mind, the division is going to be a lot, lot bigger than our regionals or district events have been. So we're going to talk about uh, scouting and strategizing as the divisions come out, as the match lists come out. What do you guys think? Taken, Lenny? So I guess I can kick this off. We've done, um, I guess, the way that we always do scouting is we take our data by hand and then input it into a database. But we were finding this weekend, even going from just a district event to district championships, we were getting behind on our data entry. So obviously looking to automate that and make it, you know, easier for other people to do. If your main data entry person, if you have one, isn't around or automate it, that'd be cool too. We can move into the 21st century. Uh, but scouting, there's also pre-scouting comes into play, you know, match analysis. You can kind of predict your ranking before it even happens, all that good stuff. So with that in mind, we're going to have to scale it up. I uh, don't know how you're thinking about doing it uh, if you're Lenny, so... So Tell something that I got you. So something that we did actually um, here at 1018 for just a state championship. Every kid was assigned a team. Actually, two kids were assigned one team. They were to go back and watch all their matches. Actually, give me a two-page paper on each um, on each team, and also break down match by match what they did, like stats, also uh, trends that they saw, uh, what driver's season they used. The whole point of it was that they would go in and nothing should surpri surprise them. Um, I also had them go in between uh, matches after every match, checking with that team and see if there's anything was wrong. If they noticed anything, ask them if anything changed. Um, so we were very, very thorough. I think our, our scouting definitely helped because uh, uh, the uh, the top selections didn't go the way we thought it should go. But, you know, people have their own way of scouting. So what about you, That's, Praneet? Um, <clears throat> so on Dave, uh, the last couple of years, at least, uh, this is my second year on the team. And what I, what I noticed is um, – they used to have a system where they would scout um, all the teams. Like each team would have one sheet, and you record all their matches on one sheet. It would just be like a row by row thing. Um, so it'd be like you know, 40 teams, you got 40 sheets. Um, the way I always did it when I was in high school uh, was we would scout each match for each team. So you end up with like you know, for 75 teams here this weekend, everyone playing 12 matches. It was like 480 sheets or something. Um, so we, we tallied up every single sheet, we put it into the database as Tegan put it, and then outside of that, as the divisions came out, our lead scout student assigned uh, four to six teams to all of our kids, which they are called so-and-so -so expert scouting. They need to know everything uh, about that team, the ins and out, <clears throat> everything about their robot, their past performance, how they progressed, as you, know, as you had with yours on 1018. And that really pays off huge in the, in the pick meeting because... We tell them because, you know, the numbers don't tell you all the story. They tell you pretty much like all of it, but not all of it, if you know what I mean. The qualitative stuff comes in when kids are just kind of sitting in the stands on their breaks. They notice like the one offs or they, t they write down, hey, this team maybe only did like four cycles this match because they were focused on like playing some defense in between or they're doing eight cycles a match, but they could do like 12 if their hat ha hatch mechanism didn't suck so much. You know, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you get like um, that's where you can find the highs and lows. And if you're looking for a stroke of brilliance, if you're like the second or third alliance trying to compete with the first alliance, that's something you might look into. Um, and, you know, with divisions coming out in the next few days, I'm already working on a, on, on a Google Doc 
for all the kids to fill out and as for their assigned teams on, you know, what teams can do, um, their climb, their hash max, all the good stuff in between. So that's what we got going. Uh, something, good. We, something we did that I, I do want to, you know, recommend for teams too is when the prelim match schedule comes out, like I'm the strat mentor, I'm not actually the coach for 4476. And I found going through our schedule, you could actually already have that preliminary match plan, knowing what you know about other teams. Uh, and trying to figure out, you know, this one's going to be a hard match. We're going to need to pull out some crazy stuff. We're going to have to put all three robots on level two, something crazy like that. Um, so definitely the pre-match scouting helped a lot, especially because during the, uh, for us, we're a really small team. We have 11 students. So we end up actually having like, you know, our scouting data comes from younger siblings who are in the audience or parents sometimes if our scouters aren't around. So having that little bit of pre preliminary knowledge uh helps us out a lot in our uh, quest to find the right uh, the right picks at champs for yeah. sure for sure all right i think that's uh all, all fair points that leads us into uh a recap our first recap take it away lenny i got you so kokomo the home of andy mark and also the host city of the indiana state championships um stories going into the event 1747, arguably the best score, scoring robot in Indiana, but no winner banner. 234, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, looking for a banner this season. Uh, the Cinderella story, blah, the Cinderella story season of seven, uh, 7457 of Super Duper Robotics. Will they sweep all the events their rookie season? And lastly, 461, will they break the street? 19 seasons, will they actually get their first blue banner? That is ridiculous but oh going into yeah going into the um the state event it was literally anyone's game i love to call it the indiana state championships the no guaranteed matches if you're gonna if you're gonna look at your schedule and think that you're gonna just you know win that that match you know you have another thing coming something always happens every match i can personally attest to I, there was a few four rp matches that didn't go the way i thought it would go so um but the teams are tough the floor is just so so high in indiana um and it definitely showed after it was all said and done. Let me see. Pull up the stats here. Lost my tab, guys. I'm sorry. All right. After all said and done, it was actually 868. The tech counts with a ranking score of 3.25 and a crazy cargo points of 420 as well. Um, they went ahead and ended up locking in um, 234, who was a crazy uh, they can do a, a rocket all by themselves almost every single match. Um, so once they lunk up and they can also double climb together, it was pretty much who's going to meet them at the finals. Um, also, another solid pick, 1720 was the second seed, and uh, they ended up picking up 1747. Like I said, it's been killing it all season. Um, after it was all said and done, it was those two that locked horns in the very end um, with uh, with the sweep, A68, 234, and also 1024. I'd never thought. Uh, in Indiana, I see all three of those teams in one alliance. Um, they take the state banner, um, easy peasy, and uh, I was super impressed with them all all weekend. 868 and 234. Um, again, shout out to 70, uh, 7457 for the crazy season they've had. A rookie season, um, still being a an alliance captain of the state championship. I mean, they were putting up a hell of a fight as well. Um, another other few shout outs. 461. They got the state banner for the chairman's award. Also, 1747 with the EI and um, the rookie All Star, very, very much well deserved. 76 17 as well. Um, and I'll pass it on to you guys up in Canada. I just want to so give I a guess... quick shout out, actually, uh, to not a team or a robot on there, but I want to give a shout out to Rachel Baker, uh, who is somebody that I've watched the last few years as an MC. <laughs> Uh, kind of growing up through the event, um, starting out uh, doing some FTC matches and stuff. And I just want to say what a phenomenal job I thought she did at the Indiana State Championship. And I can't wait to see her uh, continue to do more and more uh, matches in the future. So, Rachel, if you're listening, uh, big props to you. She definitely killed it. Definitely got my team hype. All right. So, kicking it off with uh, the first of our two divisions, we'll start with science because uh, alphabetical order, I guess. Uh, the stories going into this one is really you've got the powerhouse team of 1114, and then there's 1325, there's 188, there's 4476, there's 1241. You know, there's a bunch of heavy hitters in this division. Uh, 1305, another one. It was just generally a, you know, it was a deeper division, uh, scoring wise. Also, like shows like Hoya Robotics 4152. 
so basically it would depend on schedule. It depended on who was going to do what. And in the end, we did see for a period of time, it was 188 with the rank one seed with 1114 losing two matches, but they had a replay and actually popping up to seed in the first position. It was kind of fun though, because while 188 was seeded set, uh, first, nobody knew what was happening. The division basically exploded. We were all trying to figure out, you know, oh, well, who's going to pick who, who would decline who. Once 11-14 uh, kind of finished first again, you know, all was at peace. It was a little more like the status quo in Ontario. But even so, that night, no one knew who was going to pick who. But when you walked in into the morning, it kind of seemed obvious. You had 11-14 standing with 12-41, theory six. So then you knew that alliance was a lock. Then you would see 188 go up to 13-25. Alliance two is now locked. Uh, 1310 actually seated third, so props to them. They're making an awesome comeback. I know they had a few, like, lull years since uh, their best showings uh, back in the early 2010s, but they're back, and they picked 1305. And then 4476, representing here, uh, we picked the Alpha Dogs as our second pick. So those top four alliances were kind of locked going into, um, going actually into the alliance selection. Other teams that seeded high that do deserve a special mention is 4783 with the robot Gandalf because you shall not pass. Uh, they were a defense robot who seeded pretty high and did captain the fifth alliance. Going into a limbs, there wasn't really any upsets in the bracket uh, for us. It was mostly 1114, 1241. Uh, they took it. So first seed makes it through. They also picked up 771 um, as their defense robot who shout out to my alum team. You guys did great. Um, awesome defense from you guys. You also had 188 and 1325 making finals, uh, both of them defeating 1310, 1305, and 4476, 4946 in the semis. After that, they were two close matches, 1114 uh, 14 and 1241 going head-to-head -head with 188 and 1325. But the defense from 771 came out a little better than the defense from 2994, which is the Aztecs. So it ended up being 11-14, 12-41, and 7-7-1, who would go on to play against the winners from the technology division. Speaking of which, over to you, Praneet. Well, great segue, Tegan. Thank you very much. The technology division featured um, a, a hella banner. Hella banners everywhere. Um, you know, <clears throat> started with 2056, and we had 2200. They won during district event. 5406 won the Ryerson district event. Team Dave won Humber and Waterloo. 4917 won North Bay. 610 won Durham. There's like, there, there's there's blue banners everywhere, and and it was going to be, basically everyone was getting in line, and, and everyone was playing to be OP's pick. Um, no, there was no question about it that 2056 was basically going to rank first, and. It was on everybody else. It was everybody else's job to just be the most consistent, least wingy, so to speak, uh, robot on the field. And um, once again, uh, Team 3683, Team Dave from Waterloo, was able to accomplish that. They seated, <clears throat> they seated third, um, first time this season, upsetting uh, 2200, taking away the second spot from them this year. Um, however. Uh, 2200 pick 5406, 2386 pick 4917, and 2852 DM high voltage pick 610, the Crescent Coyotes. Um, I was very upset that I couldn't assemble a full hashtag team arm gang, but, you know, we still have the world championships. We can do that later. Um, and the number one seeded alliance got a ridiculous steal of a pick in 4907 at the 24th spot. This team, the simplest, simplest way I can put it is they were nuts. It was a swerve drive, and they knew how to drive. And they knew how to play defense. They knew where to play defense. And we, we, we watched um, match videos going through the pick meeting with 2056. And it was, it was insane. Like, they shut down, um, like, big-name teams like 4917 and 2200. They, they were shutting down, like, 200% down. Like, they were cutting down cycles in half or like two thirds in quals matches without any direction of what to do next. So they knew exactly like what they were doing. They just needed some more guidance, so to speak. Um, playoffs began and, you know, the first seed just plowed through the eighth seed. Uh, there was, however, an upset in quarterfinals where the sixth seeded alliance of 2702, the Rebels, 4678, the Cybercavs, and 7757, 
Tegan's favorite team of all time. I love the Atomic, them. The Atomic Dishwashers um, upset the third alliance. Yeah, I, I know, right? That's, what a great name. They're and so then nice. um, they faced off. <clears throat> they faced off against the number two alliance of 2200, 5406, um, and 4814. Uh, 2200 almost suffered uh, a scare of their own where they had a cargo stuck inside their elevator like frame for the first two matches of quarters and it was like a red herring where not only did it happen the first time but then it happened in two successive matches and they were just like oh my goodness they had no idea what to do um they lost they lost one of the matches but then you know they re they recovered and came through the tiebreaker um, the finals featured OP and Dave versus uh, Ram and Rambotics and Celtex uh, through some pretty rough defense from 4907. Uh, 5406 was pushed to the cargo ship and they had a little plastic cover supposedly to protect the 120 amp breaker, which betrayed them and powered off the robot. And then finals match two ended pretty one-sided. Um, you know, and then that led Dave to their third banner of the season, OP's fourth banner of the season, and 4907, up until this year, never winning an award, won the division. First time. Super, super happy for them. And um, then, you know, there's a, there's a short break, um, and then the two division winners were, like, escorted into the, this tunnel behind uh, the field, and then we were let out by... Um, a high school marching band, which was pretty cool. And then the science winners at 114, 1241, and 771, good friends on the other side of the field, faced off against 2056, 3683, 4907. Uh, they let us play a 3VO to, you know, recalibrate our robots and all, do all the good stuff and practice one last time. And then we played the two finals matches in the first match. It started fairly close. Blue, uh, the Technology Division Alliance actually started off with a short, small lead, given their sandstorm of four, uh, four hatch auto, where OP did the two side, one front, one side. 4907 did the left side hatch, and Dave did the front hatch. So that gave us effectively eight cycles to start. Uh, 1114 did their two side hatch, SWAT did the front, and Theory after trying multiple times on their division to do the two-slide hatch auto, gave up and did the rocket hatch auto. And that turned out to be a very crucial move. Um, in the first match, 4907 uh, failed to... I mean, they they just barely stuck the hatch on, uh, on the side one, and then they went to play defense in 11-14. And they shut down one of the best cyclers in the world to like one or two cycles in mm -hmm. 45, 50 seconds. It was incredible. Like, I was working with him. I had, like, these these calls for him when I would be like, when I tell you to go, um, you know, rocket block, I need you to position the robot here. If I tell you to rocket tip, I need you to position here. And this is what I need you to do. We were practicing that through the divisional playoffs and technology. We did that again um, in, our, in our practice match. And, man, that kid driving that robot was incredible. And I felt so, like, I was heartbroken for him when the robot turned off. Um through that, through like the hard hits, and mm -hmm. you know what? It's no like by no fault of anyone's. Like it's, it, it's it's a contact game. Like it's gonna happen, and you can't really put it on anyone else. People were calling for like G20s and like red cars and all that. I'm like, guys, it's like a, it's a clean game. We wasn't it a hatch that turned them off too? Um, I like don't even know. So from just so what you know, because I was watching, because I had the screen, I was in the stands, because 4476 was eliminated. They were defending 1114. Something they did really well was hitting them where, you know, 1114's lineup is automatic, and they'd hit them at the point where 1114 couldn't recover. But then 1114, they hit them, the hatch drops, and that's what hit their breaker. Uh, like, well, it, and sometimes it, that just happens. It's, it's not something you can count on, right? Like, it's not going to be yeah. like, and it's not even something that they plan. Like, no one plans to shoot a hatch at someone's breaker and, like, turn it off. Exactly. Like, it just that drops, sounds pretty absurd. And, like, that happens. Exactly, yeah. Um, and and so the first match was still super close. I think the score ended up being like 109 to 103 or something through yeah, penalties, and we were like 2v3 for like about a minute or something, which which gave us hope, which gave us hope. You're like, you know what? I mean, we're against like three really good teams, and we can still pull it pretty close. Um, maybe we can pull it off. Who knows? And um, we'll try again in the next match. And 
we did, however, change one slight thing because we like we realized that SWAT was like absolutely murdering Dave on defense. And normally Dave was doing like they would do their one hatch in Sandstorm and they would do like eight, maybe eight, like seven to eight game pieces consistently under defense, eight to nine. And then they were shut down to like six here and we're like, holy shit, guys, we need to like step this up. We need to like work on this and we need to find a way to pivot left or right. But, you know, SWAT didn't care what we had what we had in you know store for them they just like pushed through and and then it was it was awful and congratulations to our good friends alone 14 1241 and 771 for winning the first ontario provincial championships and nightbot gave me a swear account thank you very much um yeah <laughs> very 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 well deserving alliance um team 7480 won the rookie all-star award they're our rookie looking. team. Good job, guys. They are the rookie team, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and team, uh, I think it was 5672. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, awards. You've got 5672 First Nation STEM. They won chairmen's alongside 4525 Renaissance Robotics and 77 Who? 772 Saber Bites Robotics. You've got Malavia from 1241 taking on the Woody Flowers finalist award. Very well deserving. I know he puts in a ton of hours uh, for that team. And Did then you've you got. Have? What? Did you get hat, 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 hat? Hat, 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 yeah, Renaissance Robotics. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, and then 4939, All Spark 9 on their EI as well. So Absolutely. that one was kind of your award, award yeah. winning group. Yeah, the, I, the, no, our rookie team won Rookie All Star. That's what I'm talking about. 7480s from Kingston. So that's fair. That's Proud fair. Of them. Community teams, yeah. Hey, guys, real quick before we wrap up, throw a, let's throw like two teams that are going to champs um, out of the, the districts that you guys want people to, people to look out for. 2056 and 1114. Surprise! Wow! 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 So I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, my boy Sam and uh, 4917 Sir Lancer bots. Oh, they yeah. had a very very rough start to the season at Waterloo. The first few qual- qualification matches and even the playoffs were like super tough. But uh, they've stepped it up real good, and I think they're gonna be a super dark horse. Like when they made it, when they show up on the divisions, they're gonna be the team to look out for, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. All right. I could see them. And 1241, too. They have consistency, and that's pretty key. All right. And then, of course, uh, I just want to shout out 17, uh, 1720. Um, fantastic group of kids, uh, team. And then also 1747. Look out for them. And, of course, the rookies, 7454. 7454. All right. Oh, that's oh. super duper, right? Yeah, super except I, it's uh, 7574. Numbers and are I'm, hard. I'm Numbers are hard. There's so many yeah. of them. Well, thank you to everyone who has watched today. If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show, and this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are, and are just delighted to have you on board. I'm Praneet. And I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm Tegan, also known as Praneet. Also known as Pretty. And on behalf of myself, our producer Tyler, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in and thank you all. Thank you to all our moderators in the chat. Our next show is the FTC FTC Championship Preview and Prediction Show. Thank you and goodbye. (laughs) Take it easy. Bye, guys. Take care. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.